So in one of my most recent videos, I did a large pedal board build that you can check out above. And I love that pedal board. It's what I use for most everything, and I'm really, really happy with the way it turned out. However, I don't always need that many options, and sometimes I just want something that I can throw in a backpack or throw in a guitar case and have a little bit of fun with. So since that board is a Mono Creators board, and I love all my Mono Creators products, I reached out to my friends at Mono, and they sent over the light pedal board. So this is the size of a Pedal Train Nano, and I decided this would be a great platform for building on. I also love the silver color. I've only ever really had black pedal boards, but I think this is actually going to look really cool. It's super minimal. It's just one sheet of aluminum, I think, that's bent. It's really, really sturdy, and I love the way that it looks. They also sent out something that I'm maybe even a little bit more excited about, and that is the Tick 2.0. Now, this fits this pedal board perfectly, and it has some additional storage inside, so I can put some extras and backups and things like that in here. The reason I'm really excited about this combo is because I can then put the pedal board in this case and I can actually put this case on the outside of my dual guitar gig bag. So I can strap this on the outside of the dual guitar case and then I can carry in an amp and that's it. That's all I have to take in to a gig. This is also really helpful because I teach at Sanford University here in Birmingham and when I'm teaching I don't really need that many pedals because I'm not really focused on my pedal board. So it allows me to have just a few options, everything I need, nothing I don't. Um, and I'm not totally sure what's going to go on here yet, but we're going to go on that journey together in this video. Now, I also reached out to Caulfield Cables and asked if they'd be willing to send out some cables, and they were. Asher's a great guy, and they build some really, really cool cables. The reason I really like these is because the tech flex and the sleeving is really, really unique. And while I'm a huge advocate of building your own cables, his are really, really cool. So I decided to check them out. Now, I also think that these are going to look awesome on this board once we get everything wired up. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. So here we go. I'm going to show you some of my best pedal board building practices and also just how to have fun when creating a pedal board and using it for creative expression. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and let's dive in. So there are a few things that I will need in addition to the pedals and the cables, of course. Number one being a power supply. Now I have this True Tone CS6 that I've used on a mini board build before. It's going to be cutting it close having dual lock on this under the pedal board, but I'm committed to giving it a try because frankly, I don't have to get another power supply for this board. The next thing that I will get is dual lock. Now 3M dual lock is an industry standard. I particularly like the white with the red lettering. Um, it is different. There's rolls that have uh, like a brown adhesive on the back that have green lettering that say 3M dual lock on it. I don't like that as much. It's not as dense. It's not as thick. Um, and it just doesn't hold up as long if you are swapping out pedals often. I'll also have some zip ties. Little zip ties like this are really helpful to kind of help with cable management. And in addition to that, I always have some of these little cable tie mounts. Um, all of these things are relatively cheap. Dual lock can be fairly expensive. It is worth noting that Mono, like most pedal companies, sends out their boards with regular Velcro. I just don't really like the regular Velcro that much. I have used it on boards in the past and it's fine, but because this is gonna get heavier use, I'm gonna go ahead and put Zool Lock on it. I also, of course, have all of the cables needed for the power supply itself, but those things are worth having. It's also worth having a good pair of scissors to cut the dual lock and something to cut the zip ties with when you're done. I usually will use a small set of wire snippers, but scissors work just fine. All right, so I'm looking at my big board here. Uh, and everything on here is a staple. Everything that has made it onto this board is something that I really enjoy using. So obviously when I'm looking at making a mini board, I need the things that are going to cover the most possible ground. So I have a few options here. Keeping in mind also that I want this to be a really creative board, I'm strongly considering the mood. Um, part of the reason is I don't necessarily use it a ton live because I'm still using it so it can kind of live on the mini board. So I'm thinking this is a possible option. The other reason is this can kind of be used as a live pad looper kind of situation and it also has reverb and delay which is really handy on a small board. Um, as far as overdrives go I'm kind of thinking the dude and the archer because I love the archer when I'm using my sir especially going into my deluxe reverb and the dude gives me some heavier gain. 
Um, the reason I'm hesitant on this is because then I'd lose fuzz. I don't really have anything that's a mini fuzz. I would really want to have the Haze 67. However, since I only run this on battery, I could always have it off of the board itself. Um, so then I'm kind of thinking these two overdrives, I don't really think I would want compression or anything. I don't think that's as necessary. I don't want a tuner because I'd use a clip on tuner. Uh, and especially since this is for fun and teaching and stuff, I'm not as concerned about having a tuner on my board to be able to mute live and all that kind of stuff. So then I'm really torn because I absolutely love the L capstan and I absolutely love the Flint, but the Collider can do both and it can also do more ambient reverbs and delays if I need it. Um, the reason I would really like to have the Flint on there is mainly for the harmonic tremolo. Uh, I used this live on a set recently and I'm reminded how much I just absolutely adore this pedal and the tremolo effect. So I've got some options. I've got some good options. Um, I would love to get a mini fuzz again, something a little bit smaller because ideally I'd love to have a fuzz and an overdrive or two a creative pedal and then something that could kind of catch all delay and reverb so these are kind of the options that i'm pulling from i was kind of thinking about the gulf or the ditto looper um, but i do think i'm going to end up with the mood on this board as well as a couple of the other options that are living on the big board So quickly for the sounds for this video, I'm using my Sir Badger 18 through my Bad Cat 112 cab there on the right, mic'd up with an SM57 and my 1967 Deluxe Reverb, also mic'd up with an SM57. Uh, it's worth noting that I am running these in stereo mainly so we can get the sounds from the Source Audio Collider so you can kind of hear the full width of what it can do with two amps. Um, there's no spring reverb or anything on the deluxe reverb and I'm actually going into the normal channel so there's no reverb or any effects happening on either of the amps. Both are set pretty clean, uh, not even really edge of breakup just so you can hear what this would sound like. My goal with this board also is to be able to use a backline amp if I need to and I'm very confident that I can dial in all of the sounds I would need with this. You'll also notice that I do have the Haze 67 fuzz off to the side. It's easy to throw in a bag and in a realistic situation where I was gigging and taking this board, I probably would have to take this fuzz and I can run it off the board again because I'm running it on a 9 volt. So without further ado, let's hear what this thing sounds like. Mm -hmm. 